Howdy, howdy. We're back in the garage today, and I'm going to share with you today how to blend your paint and clear coat. And this can be a very useful skill if you're just doing a little bit of repair on your bumper, on your quarter panel, or wherever it may be on your vehicle, and you don't want to paint that entire panel. You don't want to remove this bumper to paint this little area. Before you start doing any kind of sanding or repair on your bumper cover, you want to think about the area that you're going to paint where are you going to blend that paint and where are you going to blend that clear now we're going to blend this clear i think somewhere in here i thought about painting this entire section which would probably be the best idea and then you just we can just blend it here and blend it there so i may do that but what you want to do is you want to clean around this area i like to use i use sprayway glass cleaner to do a preliminary clean on it and then we'll go over it with prep solvent clean it before you start sanding so we've repaired a little damage on this bumper cover sanded that damage with some 80 grit sandpaper we filled it with some filler designed for plastic bumpers then we sanded that with 180 blocked it with 320 and then we put two coats of urethane primer over it now we kept the repair really small so we masked it off and we do have some hard lines here that we're going to have to sand out Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to prep out this primer for paint and clear coat. And what, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a small block. This is a flexible block. I'm, I've got some 320 grit sandpaper on here. And we're going to go ahead and sand out these primer edges and sand this primer, get it nice and smooth. I'm going to keep this repair as small as possible because we're going to blend our clear on this body line here and blend it out here. So we want to keep it small. So let's go ahead and sand this out, get it smooth, and move on to the next step. Now what we're going to do is we're going to prep out the rest of the area for a blend. Now we're going to prep out the areas outside of that where we're going to blend our clear. So in order to do that, you can do that a few different ways. I like to use 1500 grit wet sanding paper or dry sanding paper and sand the areas that we're going to put the clear. Now we need to leave a little bit of a room for blend. So if we're painting color to here, we want to, our clear coat is going to be about two to three inches past that. So maybe here. So we need to sand out about two and three inches past where our clear is going to end. So that's going to be somewhere out in here. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and clear this entire section right here. Where we're going to do our blend is we're going to put a piece of tape right here. We're going to blend it here. I'm going to show you how we do that. And then we're going to blend it right here. So let's get this prepped out for the paint and the clear coat. So I'm going to prep out this entire section right here, and we're going to clear that entire section. Now, I'm going to use 800 grit sandpaper to prep this out for clear, since we're not doing a blending process on that section. And then we'll prep this out with 1500 grit where we're going to do our blend. There's a lot of contours in this bumper, so I did the large areas with 800 grit on the orbital sander, but I'm going to go around by hand and sand the rest of this panel. And for that, I'm gonna use this 800 grit foam pad and sand all those hard to reach areas. We're gonna tape up this trim so we don't scratch that. And then we'll be ready to prep out this area for the blend. Okay, so now that we have this all prepped out with the 800 grit sandpaper, I've masked off the areas that I didn't want to hit with the sandpaper. We've got it all nice and uniform. We have all the shine knocked off of it. That's important for adhesion of the new clear coat. We're gonna go ahead and clean it with some alcohol that get all that dust removed. See if we haven't missed anything. If we've missed anything, we'll go over those areas and then we'll prep out this area for the blend. Okay, so now we wanna talk about this area here. This is where we're gonna blend our clear coat. You wanna have some fine scratches in that. In order to, for that clear coat to adhere, um, you don't want too deep of scratches though because the clear coat won't cover it up. So what we're gonna to use today is this is a 1500 grit, 1000 to 1500 grit gray uh, fine scuff pad. We're gonna scuff this area probably right about out to here. These 1500 grit scratches can be buffed out. So when we buff this blend, we'll buff out there. 
We're going to run right along this edge here. We're going to use our body lines and contours to help us with the painting process. So right here, we're going to sand just over this edge so the clear adheres properly, but we're going to mask this section off. Okay, so this is basically what it should look like. You can see those fine scratches there. Now, we're well past where we're going to end our clear coat, and that's going to give us an area that we can polish. So this is all prepped out. We'll mask this off, and I'm going to show you how we mask it off. You want to clean it just before you mask it so you eliminate any contaminants that might be around or in those areas. We're going to blow out these moldings, blow out all the cracks, and then we'll wipe it down with some alcohol. Okay, so now we're going to mask this off. We want to mask off the perimeter first. We're going to use plastic to cover this entire vehicle. I am going to use this J-tape. Um, this is a foam masking tape, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to use this. But this has a sticky side and then a dry side. So we're gonna use this to create a soft edge of clear in this body line. So right here on this natural, natural peak, we're gonna lay this tape. You wanna lay this right behind that peak. And you don't wanna stretch this at all. We'll tape up this trim here. We'll use this natural line in this edge here to tape down to it. Okay, so here's what we got. We've got it all taped off. We masked off the entire vehicle with plastic. We taped off this edge here with foam tape and then ran plastic on it, taped off the bottom. Got this foam edge right here, so we're gonna have a nice soft edge of clear there. And then this is where we're gonna do our clear blend. Now, I've got plastic back here, but I also run a piece of paper, folded it over and looped it so I can get a little bit of clear under there. And then when I'm done clearing, I'm going to pull this paper and we'll wash it in so we get a good blend. So we're going to blend the color here, clear out a little further, and then we'll wash it in underneath this paper. So let's go ahead, wipe this down with some wax and grease remover, get it nice and clean, we'll mix up our paint, and I'll show you how we spray it. The gun I'm using today is the Eastwood Concourse LT100. This is a budget gun that only consumes 4.25 CFMs of air. So that can be run on a small compressor. It's perfect for a home repair or something of that nature. Now, we're spraying this entire section with some clear base coat um, or a wet bed, whatever you want to call it. And what that's going to do is create a good base for these metallics to lay in. Now, if you don't have a paint gun or a compressor, there is an option for you. Now, you can use clear like this. This is the Spray Max Glamour Clear. This is a 2K clear. And then I have a color that's mixed up here that I had mixed up at O'Reilly's by U-Pole. Now, this is not the color for this van, so we're not going to be using this today. But this is something you can do at home and spray out of an aerosol can if you don't have a compressor or an automotive spray gun. I went ahead and mixed up the paint and we're just going to cover the primered areas at this point. Now I'm being very precise at where I'm spraying this. I've got my volume turned to one and a half to two turns out on my volume. I've got my air pressure dialed way back to about 15 PSI. I've narrowed my fan pattern so I can keep this very precise and keep this repair and painting as small as possible at this point. With worry about blending on the second and third coat.
Got the first coat of base on there. We're gonna put one coat of base on this, let it flash, and then the second coat will hopefully cover it all. We'll blend it out a little farther. So when we go apply the clear, we have a nice consistent blend. So after 10 minutes, I'm gonna look at this panel over real well, see if there's any dust or anything that I need to correct before I go ahead and put my next coat on. So we tack rag it off, we'll go ahead and spray another coat on and I'll blend it out just a little bit farther and smooth out that transition in these metallics. Now that we have our second coat on, we'll go ahead and open up the fan pattern so we get a larger coverage in our metallics. This will give us a, a better orientation in those metallics and help smooth out that blend. I'll also use the contours of this bumper to hide any blend. So there's a contour that bends around that bumper. We're going to hide that blend right in that contour. I'll put one more final coat on to help wash in that blend and get it nice and uniform. Oh, power came back on. Now it's ready to clear. We're gonna let this flash off for about 10 minutes and then we'll be ready to clear coat this. The clear we're using today is the Finish One FC710. This is a spot panel clear and this is dust free after 15 minutes. So it's perfect for this kind of repair. We're just gonna mix it up four to one Four parts clear, one part activator. We'll strain it into our gun and then we'll apply it to this panel. And this will be cured relatively quickly to help keep dust from landing in this paint job. We're gonna spray one medium coat of clear on this. We're gonna put two coats of clear on this. You wanna let it flash in between coats for 10 minutes. Now the gun settings on this gun is I've got the fan pattern wide open. I've got the air pressure at 30 PSI and we've got two and a half turns out on the volume. We're gonna overlap 70% as we spray this. You wanna spray about six inches away from the panel and you wanna have a consistent speed and a consistent distance. Okay, so we're ready for the final coat of clear. Let me just explain to you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and put another coat of clear on this whole area. We'll blend it right there. I'll pull that paper back. And then what I'm gonna use is this U-Paul blend number nine. I'm going to spray it over. That'll help wash in that blend area where the clear coat meets the new clear coat meets the old clear coat. And that will help it to bite into that old clear coat. Okay, so here it is, the finished product. Looks pretty good. The only thing left to do is to run a buffer over this. When I buff, I like to buff away from the blend. So we buff this way. So the rotary is going this way. We're buffing away from the blend. If you buff into it, you can peel back that clear. So we wanna let this fully dry. We'll wait till Monday to get this buffed out. We'll buff out this section right here. Run a little buffer right along that edge. Maybe hand buff it even and this will be good to go. So overall, it looks really good. Uh, this is a repair you can do at home, other than where I put my finger in it right there. 
but we'll uh, wet sand and buff that out. And obviously it's not the perfect way to do this. Always the best to paint the entire panel and clear the entire panel. Uh, listen, hey, if you appreciate these videos, if you found them helpful, do me a favor, leave me a like and leave me a comment down below. I appreciate each and every one of you watching and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.